This is Gene Delisio with a featured sports interview from WDLB and WOSQ. Sarah Craig was a standout basketball player for the Marshfield Tigers between 1984 and 1988, leading Marshfield in scoring her junior and senior seasons. Sarah was a two-time all-conference selection in the Wisconsin Valley Conference, was all-state honorable mention as a senior, and set a Tiger girls basketball record by scoring 36 points in one game against Wausau East in 1988. She ended her Marshfield Tiger basketball career with 794 career points. Sarah was inducted into the Marshfield Tiger Athletic Hall of Fame in the fall of 2018. This is, is truly a, a surprise. I didn't, I didn't expect uh, uh, this, this recognition now 30 years after I graduated, but most welcome and just very uh, heartwarming uh, to, to hear uh, the, the attention that's still, still paid to athletics in this town. Can you look back for us on your athletic career and some things that you think about, some highlights that you remember from that era? Well, really, the thing that I remember is less the sports and more the uh, beginning of understanding leadership. Uh, I think sports are in many extracurricular activities are so important for kids because it's such a formative time in high school of, of your future self and I think you know I learned so much on on the basketball team of, of people leadership not only of me leading my team but also following the leaders on my team uh, who I think are often not just coaches but but uh, but Mo- other people who, who can model the way for everybody else. Can you go back to some of your earlier moments of sports, perhaps before you got to Marshfield High School on the lower levels, and think about some things you did that helped set the tone for your basketball career? Honestly, I, I don't. I think I was sort of just... Um, following others on my team, I hadn't even pl- thought about playing basketball until I hit seventh grade. I went to a very, very small uh, a grade school, Jefferson, which uh, I think no longer exists. Um, we didn't have enough people for, for a basketball team. I remember trying once. Um, so it was really seventh grade when I became most aware of, of, of how you play the game. And I w- was lucky enough to be on the same year as a, another other outstanding uh, player, Susie Bladel, who I uh, became fast friends with and sort of followed her lead on how to how to do this stuff. So um, I was very, very lucky in that respect. Also, um, I, I sort of had to jump into um, a much higher level fairly quickly. I think I was a ninth grader when um, an incident on the high school team knocked a number of people out of eligibility. Uh, so I suddenly found myself, I think, the late in my ninth grade season playing varsity I remember one one time uh, we I think the first game uh, after a lot of a lot of players lost their eligibility I think we scored a total of 10 points the entire game and I was high scorer with four <laughs> that also uh, teaches you a lot of fortitude <laughs> well tell us some things you learned in those early days about the game of basketball if you came in as you said really is a pretty raw player well, a raw player, but I, you know, let's be real. I was also uh, a head and shoulders, literally above most other kids uh, on the team. So uh, I think I had a lot of of recognition very early, even though my athletic prowess uh, did not <laughs> was not deserving of it. Um, I I think I learned the most, uh, as I said, from other players and also some coaches who were very uh, very dedicated and very patient with us all. Tell us about some of the coaches you had on the lower levels that got you prepared for high school basketball. Gosh, I remember. I, I wish I remembered all of their names. Um, uh, Coach Greenwood, um, I remember uh, distinctly. I think coached our ninth grade team, uh, and also I believe co- in later years Coach JV. I don't remember. Um, uh, I, I at a loss for remembering those names, but um, you know, I think it. I think especially now I have I have kids of my own. I realize, you know, coaching middle school, junior a, junior high school girls is is a you know is a, is quite a challenge. So um, I think you know, in retrospect, um, they you know they were 
quite patient with us uh, quite and, and taught us a lot of good skills. As you mentioned, you were thrown on that varsity team as a freshman. What was that like for you walking in there and playing against a bigger, more experienced, and in many ways very talented girls? Um, I think that's what it, it teaches you a lot of fortitude. You just you, you, not something you want to do. It's very intimidating. Going to some of the, I think our first, one of our first games was at Spash, which of course is just a huge, huge field house that was crowd, very crowded. Um, I remember always getting asked if I was the center, and uh, I don't remember who it was a coach or another player who encouraged me to t- tell them, "No, I'm the point guard." So that uh, <laughs> tried to throw them off. <laughs> Can you talk about some of the uh, teammates you had during that era, what they meant to you? Yes. As I mentioned, Susie Bladel was a, was an absolute standout uh, point guard who I think has already been inducted to the Hall of Fame, much deservedly. Um, Kim Toyama was also an excellent point guard. Darcy Rust, Paula Yeager. Um, I know I'm missing uh, many other names, but you know we had a really good crew who worked hard. I think that's you know that was it was a really important thing. Um, that we all had a had a good work ethic. No one slept off during 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 practice, um, you know. And I, I had experience on other teams that that just wasn't repeated. So I think you know that's just hugely important to a team's success. There are some people who, in my mind, as I look back on the years I've been here, that are just paired together. And I don't, I, it's very hard for me to think of Sarah Craig without thinking about Susie Bladel. Yeah, exactly. Tell us about what that relationship and what that meant to you on and off the court. Um, you know, she, she's just uh, just an outstanding player and an outstanding person who um, is uh, buckled down um, about uh, about everything. Let's get this done. Let's do this. And always a very pleasant uh, attitude. I forgot one important name. Tammy Ostrike uh, was also a, an outstanding uh, player, shooter, shooting guard um, uh, on the team as well. Um, but yeah, the the you know we. No player was um, was irreplaceable. We had a very deep bench um, uh, that you know everybody worked hard, and you know I think Susie was keen in keeping us up, you know keeping us all focused. Kim Toyama often was our six six man um, and came off the bench to to uh, to whip us all into shape as well. Your team, as you mentioned, you really struggled early. You brought up as a freshman and had a lot of freshmen and sophomores around you. But as your career went on, that team really did improve. You won about 13 games, I think, as a senior. Tell us about that improvement. What was that like to be in a situation where you did get better as the years went on? Gosh, you're really testing my memory because I couldn't even I couldn't have told you what our what our record was. Um, I guess I remember most that we were all always disappointed because we couldn't make it past sectionals. Actually, I'm not I don't even remember if we made it past regionals. But um, you know, understanding now that the the uh, the victory is in the journey rather than making it to state. That was another thing that was really amazing about um, uh, my time in high school. Is usually uh, at least twice, um, the team, or at least the core players on the team, went to watch uh, a girls' state basketball tournament, um, and that was just an amazing experience as well. Just to, to really see the top teams and really see what the what the goal was. We never made it there ourselves um, playing, but it was it was uh, it was very. Um, generous of our coaches and chaperones to arrange that and and take us to see that. Now, you may not be aware of this, but you still hold the record for most points in a game at Marshfield High School. Really? Uh, You scored 36 one night. At Wausau East, I remember I we remember that. we were there to broadcast that game and uh, did a great job that night. Do you recall that night? Anything about that night where you scored that uh, amount of points? Well, I think someone told me very, very, very late in the game how many because I had no idea of what what I had scored. I think we were uh, I f- f- forget who the player was at at Wausau East. You said it was at. I remember, it was a formidable team though. Um, so I think I was I was concentrating just as much on defense as an offense. So I had no idea. I wasn't even close to the record until someone told me I think when I went out I think I went out with a lot uh, for the last couple minutes of the game but I also remember that uh, that that record the conference that was a conference record at the time and it lasted exactly a week <laughs> so. you play 
played uh, much of your career, your entire career probably with, for Paul Fagan at yeah. Marshfield High School. Tell us about Co- Coach Fagan, what that meant to you. So Coach Fagan was pro- probably had never thought when he was, you know, when he was a young coach that he was going to end up coaching a girls team. <laughs> I think he, he, you know, had a lot, had a lot of struggles with us as, as we sometimes had struggles with him, but he stuck with us. Sometimes either Susie or I would, would, uh, you know, try to take him aside or sometimes if necessary we would say wait coach that's out of line but he would he really you know was dead so dedicated to 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 us um as he uh, as he still is i thank him for doing the um the nomination i believe for for this for this honor um uh, and uh, I, I believe will be will be actually inducting me, which I think is, you know, I think it, it's just as my success and Susie's success is a lot uh, de- a lot owed to him as well. I want to ask you one final question, Sarah. I know that you certainly could have played college basketball after high school, especially on the small school level, and you chose not to do that. Go to UW Medicine instead and pursue your academic career. Tell us about that decision. Was that easy not to play basketball? Was that something you just gave up and went on to academics? Yeah, I think I knew that I... uh I really wanted to study Russian, uh, and and I did study Russian. I majored in Russian, uh, I, and I spent uh, my my senior year in college abroad. I studied at Mos- Moscow State University. Um, now I'm a diplomat at the State Department, so I think I knew then that you know some things are 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 more important. Um, my boys now play uh, high school sports. One of them would like to, is is seriously considering um, playing college ball. Um, I, you know, I think to each their own. Some you need to weigh the academics and the and the sports. I think had I realized that there were there were possibilities of really combining the two uh, more effectively, I might have considered it. Um, but I knew with it, particularly with my my foreign um, study interests, I just I wouldn't be able to be on a team and then not be there for a, por- a portion of my time. So. I have no regrets since, you know, I'm now in the field I had always thought I might be. Um, but, it, you know, I think college ball programs are, are, um, are amazing and provide a lot of opportunities uh, and a lot of leadership opportunities for women. So I think they're, they're enormously valuable. I just chose another path. <laughs> But I still played uh, played against football players usually at, at UW Madison on Fridays at the at the gym. <laughs> Former Marshfield Tiger basketball standout Sarah Craig inducted into the Marshfield Tiger Athletic Hall of Fame in the fall of 2018. This is Gene Delisio reporting for WDLB and WOSQ Sports.